guys. Good doctor here. Um, I just wanted to show you our new building. Um, it's just been rebuilt, but so that means I've actually been in a different classroom. It's been a big building site around here, and that's my excuse for not having replied earlier to your question. But I've done the answers now, and we're going to go inside. I'm going to do one of the videos for you. I dreamed I was missing. You were so scared, but no one would listen. The question we're going to look at today is how are volcanoes? Created or what makes volcanoes happen. Uh, first thing we need to talk about is the planet Earth and the fact that although you may think it's kind of like a solid rock, actually the surface parts are separate and it's like a little jigsaw of pieces and the pieces can very, very slowly move around and that's the basis of what I'm going to explain to you. The plates on the surface of the Earth move because the molten centre of the Earth causes what's called convection currents to rise up and move at the surface and these drag the plates in one direction or another. Um, right, the Earth, we say the surface of the Earth is moving, we can't feel it move, it moves so slowly, but it is moving all the, all the same. Now, this is the problem. If we've got one plate and then another plate and they're moving apart, that's not too much of a problem because you just get molten rock coming up in the gap and filling the gap. But if they move together and they collide like that, then there's a build-up of pressure. And one plate starts to buckle and bend over time, over many years, and then suddenly it will release. And, whoa! <laughs> Something's happening here, hold on. Oh. What's going on? Oh dear. Oh, I think, I think we're okay. Mine, that, that must have been an earth tremor. That's what happened. The buckling was released and the ground suddenly moved. And we don't get many earthquakes in this country. But if we do, one piece of the plate goes down below another one. And this part of the plate gets very hot when it's gone pushed down into the centre of the earth. And it melts. And that molten rock can then try and force its way to the surface. So here's a picture of subduction happening. We have a plate coming from the left hand side moving to the right that's being pushed down underneath the plate that's coming from the right. And here, circled, are parts of the plate melting and rising towards the surface through cracks. Now these bits of molten lava are going to react with the rock that they move through and create gases. Now these gases are fundamental in what causes the volcanic eruption as I'm going to show you. Now the molten rock underground at the moment um, can have gases in it, particularly carbon dioxide, just like this bottle of fizzy drinks, it's got carbon dioxide in it. Um, and the carbon dioxide gas came from some of the melted rocks, turns into carbon dioxide, and that is under pressure and that wants to come out now, I think you know what's going to happen, but I'll show you what happens if you suddenly release the pressure of a liquid that has carbon dioxide dissolved in it. Right, the bubbles of carbon dioxide are where the carbon dioxide has rushed out of the liquid. But this is a very thin, liquid, the uh, magma or the lava underneath the ground is a much thicker liquid. So I'm going to put some chemical in this and I'm going to show you what happens if you have the same thing happen with a much thicker liquid. Right, here is a Coke bottle with chemical in that makes it much thicker. As you can see it's a thicker liquid there. Uh, the carbon dioxide is in there waiting to get out, but it won't be able to get out through the liquid so quickly. The bubbles won't be able to move to the top like they did in the first example. So let's have a look how this one works. And you see this build up of carbon dioxide and it pushes the liquid out. Um, 
this is what we would call a volcanic eruption. So the carbon dioxide underneath is driving the liquid up um, and pushing it out. We're going to have one more go uh, with, a very, with a slightly thicker one and see how that's different. This one, very thick, hardly moved at all. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> there we go. So a similar effect. The thicker the material, the harder it is for the carbon dioxide to get up. So it pushes the material out of the bottle. And this will keep going for quite a while, bubbling away, pushing out. Now, the thicker rock material that is molten, uh, the more explosive the volcano is. So you get some volcanoes that produce quite runny lava, and you get other volcanoes that produce thick lava, and you can see this pushing, bubbling away at the top there, and that would, in a real volcano, be throwing material up into the air, things called lava bomb. show you a real volcano in a classroom but I can show you a reaction that looks like a volcano it's one of my favorite reactions so I'll set that up here and I'll show you what it looks like I take my first chemical and I make a little cone shape in the top of it and then I pour a second chemical which is a liquid into the cone and fill it and then I wait a few seconds and this is what happens Finally, have a look at some real volcanoes in action. Right, I hope you've enjoyed that. That's how volcanoes happen. Uh, thank you very much for your question. Congratulations to the question writer and for everybody's questions are very good. See you again next time. I dreamed I was missing. You were so scared.